I hope you all are doing well. So in this video, I will go over the solution for the mock exam. And I know this is very late, to be very honest, but I recommend that you go over the mock exam as many times as you can. Uh, try to practice, as, practice it as many times as you can so that you're able to, you know, work on the midterm exam because the structure is very, very similar. So, yeah, I think we'll start with the theory section. So there are three sections, if you can see on the right side. There is one that's theory. It has around 10 questions. Flowchart has one question and coding has six questions. Um, maybe the number of questions will be less in the exam compared to these questions uh, but just practice the mock exam as many times as you can so the first question here it says what are the four components of an algorithm and if you've gone through the slides you would know that these are um, selection um, repetition sequence and instruction direction and flowchart are the incorrect ones so these are the four correct answers for this question the next one it says arrange the following data types in descending order which means big to small so you have to assign you have to arrange them from the biggest data type to the smallest data type again this is in the slides so if you've gone through the slides you will know the answer for this one the longest one or the biggest one is long then you have int and then short and then byte so the smallest one is byte and then you have short int long the other if it was if the question was uh, arrange them in ascending order you would arrange them as byte short int and then long so this is the correct answer for the second one the third one it says select the <clears throat> select the right conversion type for each of the provided definitions so the first one is treat a value temporarily as another type i think this is one of the questions that's from the self-evaluation quiz so like i've mentioned in the class before as well some of the questions for the theory part will come from the self-evaluation quiz so it's it's a good idea to practice that as well um, but the answer for this one is treat a value temporarily as another type. This one is called casting. Then happens automatically when operators in expression convert um, their operands. This is promotion and occurs when a value of one type is assigned. That's the key word here to a variable of another. This one is assignment conversion. Now, again, you will find these, the, the details or more information about these in the slides. So please refer those as well. Uh, so that's the third question. Then we have the fourth question, which is put the Java program execution in chron chronological order, meaning from start to finish, what happens during a Java program execution. You need to um, arrange these in that order. So first you have your source code. This is the code that you've written that gets changed to byte code. And then finally the Java virtual uh, machine compiles or, or converts your byte code into your machine code. Again, this is also in the slides. So please refer that diagram, it's important. Um, I'll give you a hint that there are a few questions in the exam based on the execution of java programs so that's the fourth question then you have the fifth one here which says which of the following lines allows a programmer to use the math class in a java pro uh, program so if you want to use math class in your program which import statement would you use um, for uh, in your program now if if the options include use the word include then that's wrong we don't have anything in java that uses the word include again similar for using we don't have any word for using to import a library let's say 
and so this is wrong again but we have a word called import that we use to import um, you know classes that are uh, that are present in different libraries or that are written by someone else but specifically the math class you do not need to import it because it's already present it's part of the lang uh, the language library which is all uh, sorry the lang package which is already imported by default so for math class you do not need to import anything but if it's uh, let's say the scanner class then you have to use import java.util.scanner if it was decimal format class then you would use import java.text.decimal format but for math you do not need to include anything because um, it belongs to like i said the java.lang package and it is by default imported in every java pro program or project that you create in netbeans okay so that's the fifth one now the sixth one which of the following best describes this code so you have an if statement here which says attempt is greater than or equal to five if attempt was greater than or equal to five this statement will be printed otherwise it will be skipped so what the best option that describes this piece of code is if the variable attempt is greater than or equal to five too many attempts will be printed this is incorrect because here it says not greater than it says the if the variable attempt is close to but not greater than five which is wrong because this operator here checks greater than or equal to so if the value of attempt was either five or more than five then um, this statement will be printed otherwise um, otherwise it will be skipped okay the code will not compile that's incorrect because um, I mean if you copy paste this code in NetBeans it should work fine all you have to do would basically be create the all you would have to do is to create the variable for attempt which should be an integer that's the only thing you would need to do otherwise it should be um, it should be fine uh, and then the others are wrong as well all you have to remember is what these operators mean this this operator here means greater than or equal to if the angle bracket was the other way around then it would be less than or equal to so again all of this is available in the slides uh, please refer those to uh, know more about this this is important and I can guarantee I think this is there in the exam you need to figure out or you need to follow the correct convention to create the names for each of these so the mock the word mock exam you need to use it as a class name a method name a variable name and a constant name and these are the options you can pick from now for classes all the all the first letters of every word so meaning every first letter or of every word needs to be capital and no spaces so that's why there's a capital m here and then capital e because they're two different words so that's how you would make uh, that's how you would name a class uh, using that word now for the method and the variable they're the same okay so the method and the variable names are the same and we follow the camel case convention for this so that means the first letter of the first word will be always small but the first letter of every other word so let's say if there were three words the first letter of the second word and the third word will always be capital letters but the the first letter of the first word will stay small that's called camel case and camel case is used for both method and variable for constants you will use all capital letters and the words will be separated using underscore so that is for constant again this kind of question is there in the exam and i would recommend that you practice this uh, as many times as you can for the next question 
it says these two pieces of code are identical from the point of view of the compiler. So you have these two code snippets. They're asking you, are they similar in terms of the compiler? So when you try to write code in either way, will it compile the same? Is that is, is what they're asking? And the answer for this is true. You do not need to write them on separate lines. You can write code on a single line, but uh, that is not humanly possible to read, right? It, it wouldn't make sense if you wrote all the code on one line. That's why we write code on different lines. But if you wanted to write it in one line, that's also fine. It, it is the same uh, for the compiler, whether it's written on one line or multiple lines. But we, we generally write it on multiple lines because it is it, to make it easy for the developers or for the programmers to read it. Okay, so that's eighth question. Okay, what is the Java Virtual Machine? Java Virtual Machine is basically an interpreter. It's not a compiler. We have something called compiler, Java compiler. That's a different thing. Uh, Java Virtual Machine is an interpreter. It's not a machine language. Machine language is ones and zeros, and it's not a web browser, obviously. So the only, the only option that's valid here is basically an interpreter. The compiler, we have something called Java compiler for that. Just remember those two things. We have something called Java compiler, which is considered the compiler for uh, Java programs. And we have the Java virtual machine, which is the interpreter, which basically just changes your bytecode oh. into machine language, into respective machine language, meaning it figures out which, uh, what operating system you're using, and then Accordingly, it changes the uh, bytecode to machine code. Okay, so that's ninth question. Okay, the tenth question here, it says, uh, the below flow chart depicts the use of cascaded if. Is it true or false? Now, just remember, if in a flow chart, you have multiple uh, decisions or multiple if, statements, for example, because these decisions kind of represent um, can, uh, if statements. Well, that's sorry, incorrect, because they can also represent loops. But for example, if this is for if statements, and you have multiple decision blocks, if the second block, so this is the second block here, right? So if the second decision block is on the true side of the first one, so this decision block here is actually on the true side of the first one. If that is the case, this is an example of nested if, okay? If the second decision block, which means if this one was on the false side of the first decision block, then the whole uh, flowchart will basically depict cascaded if, okay? So for nested if, the second decision block should be on the true side of the first one. And for cascaded if, the second decision block will be on the false side of the first one. Okay, so here we have the second decision block on the true side. So this is basically considered as nested uh, if. So the statement that it depicts cascaded if is basically false. Okay. But if this decision block was on the other side, on the false side, in that case, it will be considered cascaded. Okay, just remember that. So I think that is it for the theory part. Now, this is how you will have your flowchart questions. You just have to drag and drop uh, all, I mean, you'll be given the figure and you need to just drag and drop all these options and in the places you think that they fit best. So here, obviously, if you know nothing, you should at least know that you need to have an end and then you need to have, sorry, you need to have start somewhere here. Sorry, I'm just dropping it at random places so I can just scroll. So you, the, the, the starting and the ending is something at least you should know. You should get marks for that at least. So after your starting and your end, 
The second block is basically the data block. So that's where you're uh, figuring out what objects and variables or constants do you need. So here we will put the declare statement. Okay. So declare scanner int product and num. There should be int here also, but that's fine. So basically whatever objects and variables or constants you're trying to create should go into the uh, data block. This is basically called the data block. Then you need to prompt the user. Oh, sorry, I should have read the question so it makes more sense. So basically it says complete the flowchart below by dragging and dropping the text labels in the, into the correct shapes. The following flowchart is for a program that reads a set of integers one at a time until the value minus 99 is entered and prints the product of all um, odd numbers entered only. Okay, so okay, so here I've created the object, I've mentioned all the objects that I need to create, then I need to start prompting the user, right? So I will prompt the user for input. This is difficult. Maybe you can just um, decrease the size. Like if I can zoom out, yeah, that will be better. Okay. it. I don't know what happened. Okay, so the first thing is you would prompt the user for the input, then you will read and store the input. Okay, the next thing is you will check if the user gave you the value minus, uh, sorry, if, if it is, okay, basically what you're doing is you're taking uh, input from the user until the user enters minus 99 as the value. The minute the user enters min minus 99, you stop taking the values. But when you take these values from the user or when you read these values from the user, you need to figure out if it's an odd number. If it is an odd number, you will uh, calculate the product of that odd number, okay? So basically the next step will be you will ch check if it is the odd number. If it is an odd number, then you're going to print, sorry, multiply the number to the product. Okay. That is what we're doing. We're calculating the product. So if it is an odd number, you will multiply it to the previous odd numbers that you found. And then finally, you will check if the number that the user gave you is, um, is it not equal to minus 99. If it is not equal to minus 99, you will go back and you will prompt and read again. Check if it is odd, multiply it if it is odd, and then check again if the number was minus 99. So basically, your loop statement is connected to d this decision block. Because you can notice that the arrow goes back to another process. So this is considered your looping statement. And if it was not, sorry, if it was minus 99, you will just print the product of all your odd numbers, the ones that you were calculating in the loop. So basically, you need to figure out, the trick here is that you have an if statement within the loop, and then you have a looping statement here. You need to figure out which statement goes where, according to the question. Now, if I had actually switched uh, the the conditions, this would mean that I'm looping as long as I'm getting the number uh, from the user as an odd number. If the number that the user gave me was not odd, I would stop looping. That's incorrect according to the question because you need to keep looping as long as the user gives you an, a number other than minus 99. Okay, so that's going to be the correct answer for this one. Um, again, the exam will have similar question, similar st style of question, you will have the shapes, you just need to put the correct text in the correct uh, shape. Okay, so that is 
the flowchart question. Now for the actual part. Here you have to write code. So in your exam, you will have six questions uh, for coding. One of the question will have code that is given to you, but it's uh, it has errors and you need to fix those errors and um, make the code work. But in this mock exam, I've not given you any of those uh, fix the error questions because I want you to practice writing code. Um, so again, for this question, what do you want? Uh, and one more thing, for all your code questions, you need to just create methods. You do not need to write a complete program. So don't put the main method, don't put a class in the in your code on Code Runner. Only focus on writing methods. Okay. So here uh, you're supposed to write a method extract info that takes string of the format, this format, meaning the string that you get as parameter will have this uh, format of text stored in it. And it is basically a parameter and you need to print the details in uppercase as shown in the examples below. So basically this will for if if this is the text that is stored in your string th your method should finally should finally print it this way okay and we're assuming that this is the only thing that is given to you in the string there is no like there is no more text there if you get what i mean your your string that is given to the uh, to the method as a parameter will only have two sections, I mean two parts with a comma. It will not have multiple commas or multiple words between commas, okay? So here you will write it as public static void because the question doesn't say anything about return. It doesn't use the word return. So because there is no word return, you can use the void keyword and then you have to write the name of the method. Just copy the name of the method. In the exam, I beg you, please just copy from the uh, question because otherwise you will make mistakes, spelling mistakes uh, your, and all of that. It will cost you a lot of time. So just copy and paste whatever it's necessary. Okay, so that's the name of the method and it is taking a parameter, right? So if the, if the question uses the word takes and parameter, then you need to put something between these two brackets. And it says to us that it is a string, right? So this will be called string. And let's say, let's call it text. Okay. Now you need to figure out, you need to basically break this string wherever you find a comma. So this is the first part of the string. And this is the second part of the string. You need to figure out where this comma is. So for that, you can say int index is equal to text dot index of comma. So this will give you the index where the comma is stored. So the position or basically the index where the comma is stored will be stored in index. Now, all you have to do is a print out so system dot out dot print ln text dot substring so you need to basically the substring method will get you text from a starting index or uh, to an ending index so if i say get me the text that starts at position zero until the position of the comma, I can use text.substring start at zero end at index. Okay, that is the first part. And then the same thing system.out.println text.substring start at index plus one and then I don't need to write the ending part because I want it until the end of the string. I don't want uh, anything after, I mean, there is no second comma that I'm trying to find. There's only one comma. So in the beginning, the first part I can get from 
the index z index zero until the comma and then from comma until the end if you remember we've done something similar for first name and last name there was a question in one of the labs where you needed to get the first name and the last name and you tried to figure out where the space is and then you broke the string based on the index of the space so one last thing is all you need to do now is print this in uppercase so all of this text you can just say to upper case dot to upper case this is one of the easy questions you could have created another string you could have just written let's say um, I can say string ID is equal to and all of this here okay and then print ID and then the same for the other one it's up to you you can do it directly you can do it uh, you can create new variables for it as long as it it works that's what we care about so now in the exam when you click on pre-check there is no penalty you can click on pre-check as many times as you want okay there's an error here um, you can click on pre-check as many times as you want but when you click on check uh, it will the first time there is no penalty just like here it's mentioned the first time there is zero penalty the second time you click check there's 10 percent penalty then 20 30 40 it's capped at 40 after that you can pr press on pre-check as uh, on check as many times as you want but you will have like a 40 percent penalty after 40 percent it doesn't uh, increase now it says please comment your code appropriately in, in your exam you need to write at least four to five minimum four to five comments for your code to work so here I can let's say say method to extract info get index of comma create strings for first and second part and then here basically you print first part and then print second part okay now if you click on pre-check it should work and then if you click on check it's fine okay so that is how you would code this question it's one of the easy questions now i noticed some of you have tried using arrays and all of these other things my suggestion is don't go for those high-end solutions if you don't know how they work if you know how they work well and good do whatever you want um, but if you don't know how they work you'll actually set yourself up for crisis i would say because in the exam you have similar concepts but if you try to apply a concept that you don't know of that we've not taught you about and you don't understand it properly then you're just uh, you're just messing yourself setting yourself up for failure so and in the exam we've not put any questions that will require you to use any high-end solutions okay so you don't have to worry about that where it only consists of topics and ideas that you've been fam uh, you know familiar with through your labs through your uh, self-evaluation quiz nothing from nothing that you don't know of you just need to maybe think a little bit but apart from that you should be able to do it so moving on for this sec for the 13th question or the second code question you're supposed to write You're supposed to write a method calculate co compound interest that reads from the user the following data. P is for principal, R is for rate, N is for number, and T is for time. Okay. The method should then calculate and display the compounded interest uh, amount and format it to three decimal places according to the formula below. This is the formula that you need to use. And you can assume that the scanner and decimal format class, uh, packages or classes are, are already imported for you and all input is valid. So you do not need to do any 
validation you do not need to check any input if it's valid or not so the method name is calculate compound interest and it says it doesn't it says it reads from the user so and it doesn't use the word parameter and it also it also doesn't use any word return so that means no need for any return public static void the name of the method and the brackets are going to be empty because there are no parameters now you need to read from the user so that means you need to create a scanner object scanner input is equal to new scanner system dot in this is scanner object for reading then you need uh, to read from the user right so you can say enter p or what you can do is you can create all these variables first okay so you need to create a variable p which is double r double n double t double okay so p so double p uh, r n and t okay you can set them all to zero if you want or leave it like that it's up to you and then you start uh, reading from the user so you would say system dot out dot print ln enter p again these prompts i would recommend you just copy them because if you make mistakes um you know it will just cost you more time to fix them so the first one is p so p should be equal to uh, input dot next double okay and then the same part but you need to change the variables so this is for r okay and then this is for n And this is for T. Okay, now you have all of this. And finally, you just need to calculate the amount and display it. So you will calculate it this way. Amount. So basically, double amount is equal to P. All of this is getting multiplied. Okay, so you have p there multiplied with something in the brackets which is 1 plus r divided by n so you have to write 1 plus r divided by n and then n, to n multiplied by t and that's considered as the power for the whole uh, equation so all of this you would need to write it in math dot power one plus r that's the first part and then this is the second part so you calculate all of this and then multiply n with t and that is considered the power for all of this okay and then finally minus p and then you would you, now you need decimal format for so basically let me just write prompt so it doesn't tell me that it's wrong reading and because you need to have a uh, format i mean you need to format your final output you need to use decimal format which is fmt for example um, new decimal format now they want three decimal places so you will write hash in quotations you will write hash dot zero 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 okay now i don't know if it is zero 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 or hash 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 i will just wait for uh, the the first check to see if it's going to be zero 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 or hash 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 in this in the last three digits because it depends if you want to print zeros 
let's say your final answer was 10.0 if you print if you keep this as 0, 0, 0, it will print as 10.000, okay? But if you keep it as hash, 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 it will just print 10. It will skip the zeros. So hash doesn't print any zeros. But if you put zeros, it will print zeros. Okay, so here you need to display Final amount is equal to now this object that I just created fmt dot format and then amount. Okay, I will click on pre check first again as many times as you want, it should be fine. Now I'll click on check. Okay, so it's fine. Um, again, sometimes I, I've tried my best to keep all the uh, possible scenarios of your testing for your code in the pre-check, but sometimes the first check will show you if there are extra requirements for your code and you can change it accordingly. But I don't think um, you know that's required. I think all your pre-checks have all the test cases. Um, but to be sure, just check all your uh, check tests uh, to make sure that you've done uh, or to make sure that you've written your code correctly. So that's this question. The next one. OK, write a method hypotenuse that takes or that accepts two parameters. So we need parameters there as sides of a right angle triangle and prints the hypotenuse formatted to two decimal digits using the Pythagoras theorem as shown below. Make sure both parameters are more than zero. Okay, so here you will write public static. Does it return anything? It doesn't. It doesn't use the word return, so it should be void. Then I can just copy this here and paste it here. So it has one parameter A and the second parameter B and you need to calculate C according to the formula. So this would be double C is equal to, so this part is called the square root, right? So it's math.sqrt. And then within it, you have a square plus b square. So you have, I can create another variable. I can say, um, let's say a2, for example, is equal to math dot power a comma 2. And then double b2 is equal to math dot power b comma 2 and then squ for square root i can just say a2 plus b2 okay and finally print it so here it will be system dot out dot print ln result is now you need to format it so for that you will need decimal format fmt is equal to new decimal format um, hash dot zero zero because they want two decimal digits Okay, and then you need to also make sure both the parameters are more than zero. So if A is greater than zero and B is greater than zero. So if both A and B are greater than zero, only then you will do all of this. Okay. Uh, 
otherwise you will print for the user invalid input system dot out dot print ln invalid input and here you will use fmt dot um, c fmt format c okay then click on pre-check okay I need to put comments but I will show you what will happen if I click on check it's going to give me that it's going to tell me that one of my uh, input sorry one of my output is wrong but that's okay but I've only clicked on it once so there will be no penalty but if I click on it again I will have penalty now I, the reason I'm showing this to you is because it doesn't tell you how many times you've clicked on check. You need to keep track of how many times you've clicked on it to make sure that um, you don't get penalty, you know, all the time. So just remember the first check, there is no penalty. Every other check, there is penalty. And, um, and you need to be aware of how many times you've clicked on it. So here, just put... Uh, comments so for example validating parameters uh, formatting result printing result and then printing error and now if I click on check, should be fine, okay? Okay, so write a method void Morse code number that accepts a one digit number as parameter and prints the corresponding Morse code according to the table below using full stops and hyphens. And you are supposed to not use if else for this question that means you're supposed to use switch statements so here you have a parameter but you don't have anything for return you don't have the word return so your code will uh, your method will look something like this public static void morse code number and then sorry about that and then you will have parameters int let's say number okay so here you have to check first of all because one of the conditions here is that you only print for numbers between one between 0 to 9 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 if I give a number 11 or 16 it's not considered it's not considered valid so if the number is greater than 9 for example then you're supposed to display for the user the error that says morse code only for zero to nine okay otherwise okay this is i should have not written it this way because i'm clearly using if else here but you will you will see what i mean uh, by not using if else so here i just need to use switch instead of writing the numbers uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in if else uh, statements, I need to use switch here. So switch number, if the number was 1, or let's say if the number was 0, you need to print all hyphens. So system dot out dot print ln 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And then break don't forget the break if you don't put the break it's going to print everything if the number was zero it will print this but then it will print everything 
um, after it as well until it finds the word break okay so that is case zero then case one the same thing but the characters are different for one it the first one is dot and then you can just copy it for two it is two dots for three it is three dots for four five six seven eight nine okay so this is four five six seven eight nine and this one will be four dots this is all dots and six is the other way around you have one hyphen and then all the dots two hyphen three dots three hyphen two dots and then is it correct okay correct so and then four hyphens and one dot and then default oh my bad my bad you could have just put default here sorry i'm just confused today um you could have just put default here and print morse code morse code only for nine and then you just don't need any of that my bad sorry about that then just move this okay now again it's going to tell me that there are i need to put comments so check the value of number this is error this is printing morse code for example let's pre-check method for printing morse code okay okay that's correct my bad i forgot how i phrased the question but that's how you would do it for switch statements uh if any of the questions in your exam have switch you do not use if else or any if statements so that's the question the next one the next two are hard um and they're definitely there in the exam especially this one so here you've su you're supposed to draw a pattern okay uh, and this is the pattern you will draw for example if it says three you will draw a on the first row b b on the second row and c c c on the third row so this is considered one triangle and then you just mirror it if it was five you will display from a to e and then uh, the second triangle will just mirror it from e to a and if it was one you will just print a a okay uh now i don't know if there is an invalid situation but let's see we can figure it out with check so basically it should be public static void draw pattern int n and here just remember it like this these kind of questions whenever they show up just remember this is how you're supposed to do it just remember just try to remember how you will print a number from one to let's say n 
okay so if n was 5 how will you print numbers from 1 to 5 obviously when you know how many times you're going to repeat uh, you will use the for loop like we've discussed in the class and when you and when you don't know how many times you're going to repeat a loop you will either use while or do while up to you so here I will use for loop because I know how many times I want to repeat and I will start from int let's say i is equal to 1 i is less than or equal to n plus plus i or i plus plus it's the same thing and then you would print it you would print let's say i okay so this will print numbers from 1 to n uh, on different lines okay all you have to do Okay, just remember one thing. For these kind of questions, don't use ln. Just use system.out.print. That's because you don't want uh, the stars or whatever you're trying to print to be printed on different lines. Here, they're printed next to each other, right? So in that case, you do not want ln. So by default, for these kind of questions, don't use print ln. Only use uh, system system.out.print. So all you have to do now is just copy this part here, okay, and then remove this statement and print what you just copied, okay. This is now one thing here is that you've already used i, the variable i for the outer loop, so you cannot use it for the inner loop. So here you will change it to j j and j okay and instead of printing i here in the question we're printing characters a b c right so for that you will create character for example letter is equal to a okay and you will just print letter for example if you were printing stars you will just print uh, in quotations you will just put star but here we're printing letters so I will put letter now if I pre-check it it's going to be wrong but I want you to see what it's happen what it's doing so it's printing a all of these times these numbers number of times but um, that basically this is the expected out output this is what my code should give but this is what my code is actually giving so in this case it's printing a but it's printing them on the same line now just remember for these kind of questions the outer loop is considered as rows and the inner loop is considered as columns okay so i'll just rename them accordingly instead of using i i will use row and instead of using j i will use column okay now if you notice um, here this is considered a row this is considered a row this is considered a row all of the horizontal lines meaning from left to right it's considered as a row anything from top to bottom is considered as a column okay you will notice that after every row you have a new line so after you've printed a you go to a new line after you're done printing b you go to a new line so every row after every row you have a new line so this part is printing columns and this part is printing rows the outer loop right so just before you finish the outer loop you're supposed to print like i said don't use print ln just print new line which is backslash or whatever slash that is n okay this will create a new line now if I click on pre-check it's giving me the uh, it's printing the letter a for me but it's printing it as a square and not a triangle the only thing you need to change here is for the column it should start from 1 but it should end not at n it should end at row so if you're on the first row you will print the column from one until one 
so it will only print once if you are on the second row it will print from 1 until 2 if you're on the third row it will print from 1 until 3 that's exactly what's happening here you're on the first row and you're only printing in one column on the second row you're printing in two columns on the third row you're printing in three columns so the number of columns actually depends on the number of rows so that's why instead of keeping it as n which is the total number of rows I, I'm, I'm using the row variable so and whatever the value of row is it's going to start from one and print until that many columns so if I click on pre-check again now I have it as a triangle okay now I need to mirror this I will show you how to change the character but you need to mirror this right so you will copy this whole thing okay and you will paste it here and all you have to do is if you notice this is the second triangle right the top one is from a to b a to c and then the bottom one is from c to a so it's basically reversing so instead of starting the row at one you're going to start it at n you're going to make sure that it is greater than or equal to one okay and then instead of incrementing it you will decrement it that's the only change you will make if you click on pre-check you will notice that there is from a to a and then it's mirroring it now you need to change the characters for that all you have to do is notice when the character is changing so here there is a in the first row in the second row you're changing it to b but every column in the second row is displaying the same character or the, or the same letter. So you're changing the characters or changing the letter every time you change the row. So when you move to the next row, you will change it. You will change the character. So once you're done printing the letters in all the columns, you can change the letter by just writing letter plus plus. Okay, and if I click on pre-check here, it prints A, B, B, C, 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 and then we'll fix the next one as well. But between each letter, there is a space. So you need to put that space as well. And if you click on pre-check now, now it's going to have spaces. So A, B, B, C, C, C. Now, for the next one, again, you should have space when you're printing the letter. But... For the first one, you updated the letter after you printed all the columns. For the mirrored part, you need to update it before printing all the let uh, all the columns. And here you will not do plus plus. You will do minus minus because if you notice here, it's going backwards. So if it was C, it will go to B. If it was B, it will go to A. So here, if you click on pre-check again, now it's printing it correctly so a b b c c c and then c c b b a okay now one more thing in your exam you will have similar question like i've said before the only thing you will need to figure out is where to print you only have these two lines that you're printing in right one is within the nested loop and one is in the outer loop all you have to figure out in exam is what should i print here let's say I print a star here what will it change so after every at the end of every call uh, oh, sorry at the end of every row it's just printing stars or if I change the, the letter at a different place so instead of changing the letter in the outer loop I change it in the inner loop what happens okay a b c d e f it's changing it in every column instead of every row so that's all you need to figure out in the exam the same question the exact same code will be written the only thing is you need to figure out what you're printing and where you need to print it and I've told you that you only have two places where you need to print right so in the exam just try to fig try to change those places as in try to change the text you're printing in these two places that's it once you know 
how to code this. All you have to figure out is where, how to print and what to print. That's it. And you have easy 10 marks. So if I click on check again, okay, that's the most important question. If you study nothing, at least study this question. Okay, and then the final one, it says write a method find min max, which keeps prompting the user for a number. When the user enters the number zero, the program stops and prints the largest and smallest number entered by the user. So no return, no, uh, no parameters. So public static void find min max. Okay, and then you have enter a number as a prompt. Because we're reading, we need scanner. So scanner input is equal to new scanner system dot in. And then you would say do. Because here, you don't know how many times you're going to repeat. You don't know how many numbers user is going to give you because it depends on the user when they enter the z number zero, you need to so stop prompting. So here, I will just use the do while loop. If you knew how many times you're going to loop, then you can use the for loop. But here we don't know. So you either use while loop or do while loop. Okay, now here, uh, I need to, to create int number is equal to zero. Okay, is equal to zero. Uh, min is equal to zero and max is also equal to zero. So this variable is used for taking input. This is to store the minimum number or the smallest number and this is to store the maximum number or the largest number. The next thing is you will ask the user. So system.out.println enter number and then you will say number is equal to input dot next int because it's an integer and then you will check if um, okay we need to get the largest and the smallest right so if la uh, if the number that is stored in max is less than number then you will update max with this number okay and if the minimum is smaller than or is if the minimum is larger than uh, the number that the user gave you then number should be oh sorry then min should be equal to number and then you keep looping until the number is not equal to zero. Once you find that the number is zero, you just print out for the user max is max and then min is min. Okay, uh, scanner for reading input for storing variable for, oh, sorry, for storing input and max and min values prompting user reading. printing result click on pre-check it's correct click on check okay that's correct so that is how you will do the mock exam again practice this as many times as you can uh, the exam is very similar and yeah, so practice the mock exam, go through the labs and then go through self-evaluation quiz and then also try to go through the slides. If you do all of that, I think you should be 
able to do the exam very well. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for this video. All the very best. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, I hope you all do well in the exam. See you. Bye-bye.